close your eyes. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. And as you breathe in, notice where the breath comes into the body, where you feel it in the body. And place your attention there, all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. And if long breathing feels comfortable, keep it up. If not, you can change. Make it shorter, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. See what the body needs right now. The breath is one form of nourishment for the body. You can go for a couple of days without food. You can go for a period of time without water. But you can't go far without the breath. And you can turn it into nourishment for the mind, too. Because the mind, just like the body, needs food. It needs nourishment. The Buddha said there are three kinds of nourishment. There's consciousness, there's contact at the senses, and then there are your intentions. Right now we're feeding off the intention to stay with the breath, to keep the breath one thing in mind, to get the mind to settle down. Because you look at the food we get from contact, when we look at pieces of art, it's very inspiring. But there are other kinds of contact that are not so good for the mind. In fact, the contact at the senses is pretty thin food. The same with consciousness. You have consciousness of this moment, consciousness of that moment, and then it just disappears, disappears, disappears. But with your intentions, you can make them last over time. And here again, it's going to make a huge difference in whether you're going to feed well or not feed well. Because your intentions are your karma, and they have results in the present and over time. So you want to nourish the mind with good intentions, skillful intentions, intentions that harm no one, that look for happiness in ways that are not only harmless but also good for the mind. Because some forms of pleasure, some forms of intentions are pretty intoxicating, and they blind you to what's going on. Whereas the pleasure of staying with the breath, getting to be on familiar terms with the breath, that clears things up inside. You can strip away all kinds of other stories about the past, about the future. You can be just with the present moment and see the mind as it functions in the present moment. You begin to see where you talk to yourself in ways that are harmful and how you can change. And you look at the perceptions in your mind that maybe driving you crazy, where well, you can change your perceptions. In other words, the images you have, the labels you apply to things, that this is this and that is that, or maybe that is this and this is that. Look more carefully. Perceptions, the Buddha said, are like a mirage. You look off in the distance in the desert and you see water glimmering. You think you're going to get some refreshment. You get there and there's nothing. There's just a trick of the light, trick of the air. And our perceptions can be like that. They can be tricks of light, tricks of air. I had a friend one time who was teaching English in Korea, and she'd brought some slides of life in America to show her students as a way of practicing English in, in its environment. And she had one of a restaurant. And this was back in the days when Korea was very different from America, and everything was very new to the students, except for one thing. They saw a dispenser. And she pointed to this and she says, what do you think this is? And they said, this is, for, this is for chopsticks. And no, she said, suppressing a smile, she said, it's for straws. So we all come with our perceptions ready-made. We have to look many, many times to see how true they are. Because often we can be very convinced that they're true, but they're deceiving us, they're mirages. So you want to be very careful about what your intentions are how you feed on them, what you're feeding on. And the thing is that with contact outside, with consciousness, with the senses, there are a lot of things over which you have no control, but you should have some control over your intentions, which means that you can have some control over your diet, how you feed the mind, to try to feed the mind with good, healthy food. That way its good qualities will grow strong. And it finds that it can find sources for true happiness inside. 
but I have been looked too much outside for them. That's when your position of safety 